Links are the lifeblood of any domain. But as anyone who's been in SEO will tell you, it's been really difficult in recent years to get those links, especially the authoritative ones. What we see is a number of journalists producing far more content than ever before, at the same time being compressed for time. So one of the keys is Harrow. And in this lecture, I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step instruction guide to how I've been able to print hundreds and hundreds of links for many different types of properties through Harrow. So let's dive in. So if you're watching this, you're probably fairly familiar with Harrow, help a reporter out. It connects sources with journalists. And obviously, if you're watching this course, you are trying to be an appropriate source. So first things first, make sure you've got your Harrow set up correctly. It's a pretty simple platform, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but just make sure that you go with your preferences, specifically about your master email list. I tend to advise people to go towards the master list rather than picking individuals, because let's be honest, journalists aren't always doing the best possible job when it comes to making sure that their request is in the right list. And so you'll sometimes see very relevant inquiries in other lists, things that you're not going to see if you haven't chosen the master list. So I generally recommend make sure you have the master one for those three emails that come each time a day. And so let's just look at an example together. Uh, many of you will be familiar with this format that comes around three times a day. There's a morning, a afternoon, and an evening. And so this is where I wanna start with for my process of how I look at these emails. Obviously, you wanna look at them pretty promptly after uh, you've received them in your inbox. As we can see here, uh, you know, it's just been 17 minutes since I've received this email. So it's a good time to, to go in and see if there are any potential inquiries to answer. So the first step is to think about your industry. So in my case, I'm in technology, and so I'm thinking about uh, things that are related to business, and I'm also thinking about things that are related to emerging technology, um, how technology disrupts people and businesses and uh, those types of areas. So the first things first, I'm gonna go to the, the key areas. In this case, I'll start with business and finance. Now, right off the bat, Ignore the anonymous ones. The anonymous ones are likely trying to harvest your information to write their article for them. And there's just real no reliable guarantees. I, I tried a lot of experimentation in, in the early days, seeing that maybe they were hidden publications, maybe they were actually top tier publications uh, that actually were, were substantially valuable. Turns out more often than not, they really weren't. And then the next step, as we're looking down, we're really looking for some, some big names, right? Because the first step of why you're probably on Harrow is you're trying to get um, a particular top tier publication that you haven't otherwise gotten. And we know the benefits of getting a top tier publication because a top tier publication not only will give you published in that publication, it will also likely be syndicated. So you can print, you know, 40, 50, 60 links from, from just one. Uh, and that's obviously a real good way to scale uh, your effort. This is one of the reasons why I contribute to something like an entrepreneur.com. Uh, every time I write a piece or get a link in that, suddenly I can see with my SEO tools that I'm getting 40 to 50 links back to my domain. So as we can see, this particular one doesn't have a whole lot of big names. We've got a couple here of Forbes and HuffPost. Now, this is a perfect example. So I've looked, I've seen the top tier publication. I've seen Forbes. But as I can see here, what to expect from your first woman's exam? It's not really relevant to my domain. And because it's not relevant, you really should avoid pitching it. You really want to make sure there's a perfect intersection between the experience that you have as an individual, the company that you're representing, and the publication itself. Because 
As you can imagine, journalists receive a lot of pitches through these platforms. And by receiving so many pitches, they're really looking to get the absolute best possible answer so they can cobble together their particular journalistic piece in as quick a time frame as possible. And so we look at those two and we see like Forbes, this isn't going to work. This HuffPost one, uh, also not going to work. So that's when we go to the next stage. Now, our next stage, if you don't recognize the publication, you're going to have to start getting a little bit uh, more in depth when it comes to evaluating the domain. Now, what do we do here? Let's pick an example. CEO Blog Nation. First of all, I would go over to my Ahrefs account. Now, it doesn't have to be Ahrefs. You can use SEMrush. There's uh, obviously a bunch of different uh, uh, platforms that allow you to uh, ascertain the domain ranking of a particular domain. So I'm just going to sign in to my account. And from here, what I'm going to try and do is figure out how good a particular domain is. And specifically, I'm going to compare that domain to my own domain. So right now, I see here the company that I'm representing has a domain ranking of 54. So let's go back to our inquiry. I'm going to see CEO Blog Nation. So popping over to Google, I'm going to try and find the URL. There it is. I'm going to click on copy the link address and then I'm going to pull this over. Just have a look at that domain ranking. Now clearly what I'm looking for here is not only the standard domain ranking, but I'm also looking for a general level of quality of the domain. So as this loads, we're going to you know, just look and see if there are some good signs, bad signs, what does it mean? So right off the bat, we can see a domain ranking of 71. It's pretty solid. It's got 21,000 backlinks. It's got a decent amount of referring domains. It's got some okay organic keywords, okay organic traffic. Yeah, seems a pretty reasonable domain. Another test I like to do is also just a little bit of a spot test. Now this is a little bit more qualitative, um, but you know I always want to have a look at you know, is, is this publication going to make sense for me? Is it actually worth my time pitching? Because as you can imagine, with Harrow, as with, with most pitches that you do to a journalist, it is a little bit of a volume game, and you're likely not to get, you know, a huge amount of success. You know, even the most successful campaigns I've run through Harrow, you're looking at somewhere between a 10 to 20% conversion ratio in terms of the amount of links you get versus the amount of pitches. And so knowing that, I really want to be careful with my time, giving myself the best possible chance to succeed. So right off the bat, I can see this is a fairly standard news site. It seems like it's got a, a decent amount of, uh, you know, both quality content in terms of we've got these listicles, which is all very common. We've got a podcast. Um, you know, it, it seems like it's, it's, it's reasonable for me to pursue. Okay. So now that we've decided that, and we've decided that we're going to uh, pitch this particular inquiry, this is where we need to go into the actual inquiry itself. Now, again, many of you will be fairly familiar with this. You've got deadlines, so you want to make sure, obviously, that the deadline uh, you have enough time to get a response in. Rule of thumb here, always, if you can get your response in earlier rather than later, you give yourself a much higher chance of being selected. Um, and here we're looking at the query. So the query is pretty simple. Paragraph response from entrepreneurs and business owners on how they use social media for their business. Uh, please include a paragraph, a link to your headshot, company name, URL. Even if this query didn't say that, we would want to still have 
those materials. We'd still want to have a link to our head shop. We'd still want to have company name and URL, especially the URL. If you don't give the URL and you force the journalist to look for it, then chances are they won't link to you. Even when you do include a URL, sometimes journalists won't link to you. Now, this might be because they're forgetful. That's certainly possible. Sometimes it's because their publication doesn't allow links, in which case you still get a little bit of value from Google in terms of semantically being uh, mentioned in a piece that is relevant to your industry, but obviously not as much value as a link uh, directly to your domain. And you also want to think about whether it's follow or not follow. That has become less of an issue in these days, and Google has been pretty open about the fact that no follow links, particularly from the top tier publications, so think the, the Forbes, the Entrepreneurs, the Fast Companies, even New York Times, most of the top domains in the 80s and 90s uh, of domain ranking have generally adopted a no follow across the board, and therefore Google still views a link from those organizations as a, an indicator of authority for your domain. So there's still a lot of value regardless of whether it's follow or non-follow. So now I've got this query. I've decided, I've gone through the, you know, the qualification step. I've made sure that I'm, I'm ready to uh, tackle this. I've got to it in a reasonable amount of time, so I'm feeling confident. Now, let's compose our email. So now I've got my email ready. And for this, I want to give a couple of examples. So in the next part of this, I want to show you exactly the types of content and the framing of how you pitch these particular publications. So let's respond to this query and let's do it together. So the first thing to think about is the subject line. Now the subject line is fairly uh, positioned towards making you appear like an expert. So don't think about like what necessarily their query is. Think about a short, succinct way to describe yourself. So in this case, I'm looking that this is about social media. So I'm going to say something along the lines of a tech marketing executive. Doesn't have to be longer than that for social media inquiry. You want it to be as authoritative as possible because this is where we often trip ourselves up. We get too much into the marketing side of things. We think like, oh, we need to make ourselves seem like massively grandiose. You just need to appear strong and trustworthy so that the journalist can pop your thoughts into their piece. So the first thing, a fairly simple You've got the name, so you can address them by name. First things first, you want a small statement about yourself that matches the type of expertise they want. So this is a paragraph response from entrepreneurs. So I am the founder of Nano Globals, an expert-led platform that helps mid-sized tech companies scale internationally. And obviously, this is a piece that I have for my particular business, whatever your particular business, I'd encourage you to take this exercise and do it yourself. But the fact is, a really short, sharp description. The next thing to do, obviously, put a link. Because remember, you know, you want to give yourself the best possible chance to get yourself not only mentioned, but also get that link juice, which is obviously what we're craving by doing this exercise. So give a link first up. The next point is you want to go below is my response to your inquiry. Now this is where it is critical. You want a very short and sharp description that matches 
what they are asking for in their request. You wouldn't believe how many times I've seen on the other side, and I'll give you guys a little bit later on an insight into this angle where a PR person comes in and says, blah, 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 can answer this request. They have all these accomplishments, but I don't actually get an answer to my inquiry. This is what's critical for journalists. They're working on tight timelines. So rather than give them all this extra fluff about who you are, just focus on answering their question. This is the number one piece of advice I can give anyone. Just answer their question in as quick a time frame as possible and succinct time frame as possible. So here we go. Paragraph response. In this case, we're just going to say uh, social media is best benefit is for recruiting, driving visitors to recruitment efforts, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now I'm not gonna, you know, make the, the best possible answer right now off the cuff. Obviously, you know, you wanna be thinking about it a little bit more deeply, but most importantly, once you've written out your answer, your answer needs to do two things. One, you need to know that your answer would be applicable to be dropped into an article straight away. And the second thing is formatting. So let's take the format. And once we've finished writing, we want to make it italicized, make it as easy as possible for the journalist to just go, great, this answers my question. This provides me an extra piece. Because remember that the journalist has a narrative of why they're writing this piece. So if we look at this one, it's pretty simple. They're looking for ways and strategies and tactics for entrepreneurs to use social media in their business. So it's a fairly positive piece. It's an angle that is looking to help other entrepreneurs. So this clearly the angle is what is your best piece of advice or one tip you could give for entrepreneurs on how best to use social media? So you want to make sure that your response to this particular question matches as clearly and succinctly as possible so that that full narrative of the full 1000 word piece that most journalists are writing can just plop this in. You are the expert and that is your one piece of advice. The final piece comes in to how you sign off. Now, more often than not, most journalists, especially these days, are dealing with such volume of content. They've, you know, they've had their writing room slashed. So more often than not, they're just trying to get the answer based on, uh, the, the work that you've written in the email. But you still want to make yourself available for that connection. So how do you do this? If I'm going to, be italicized if you would like to speak with me more on l leveraging social media and this this piece here obviously is uh, customized based on what the the particular uh, inquiry is please reach out via phone at uh, xxx dot whatever your phone number is, and patrick.ward at nanoglobals.com. Now here, before you fully sign off, once again, we just give a couple of pieces of information. We give name, Patrick Ward, title, founder at nanoglobals, URL. Once again, we're going to give the URL again. Uh, always give the URL in the format that you want it to be. So I know that some people have www, some people have HTTP, some people have HTTPS, whatever it is that is the ideal domain uh, for you, just put that in and put that in exactly. Don't just give it like nanoglobals.com because you know different computers do different formatting and it can kind of get funky. By doing this and linking directly, your, your benefit is you know that the journalist, when they do link, is just going to pick that link, go a simple right click, copy the link address, and then 
paste it in. Um, you can also give a headshot link. Generally, I recommend inserting a drive link set to, set to public and sign off. Fairly simple, but by doing that, you give yourself the best possible chance for this middle part and that is the key, right? This middle part is where the meat is. That is what you are trying to get quoted as quickly as possible. You do that, and you do that with enough of them in enough scale, you can do some, some really solid results as well as building your authority as a, as a particular thought leader if you're doing it on behalf of yourself. You can also do it uh, pretty successfully for a number of other executives if you're being a ghostwriter. So in the next section, I just want to show you what it looks like on the other side of the house, i.e. the journalist side, to again reiterate this message for you of best practices of how, while you might feel like you're giving less information, you're actually being more helpful to the journalist. Now let's look on the other side of the equation. So I write many different types of reports, usually using a variety of statistical methods in order to generate uh, both the data and therefore the insights that I'm trying to accomplish with these reports. What I found is help a reporter out actually was a decent way to gather some of that data. And inadvertently by doing this exercise, I was able to see what it looked like on the journalist side of the equation. And here's where I really want to show you the value in answering a question directly. So first of all, we see here the query that I had was, I'm developing a piece for Forbes about e-commerce, and I asked some pretty specific questions. I asked some statistical based questions for people to answer. And needless to say, this example, is more often what I get. I get a PR representative giving me a pitch about their CEO. It's a lot of bragging and it doesn't really help me, right? I look at this and I'm frustrated as a journalist. I'm like trying to just get the data, right? Give me the data so that I can do my piece effectively and I will quote you. Needless to say, didn't respond to this person and you will find as you pitch many, many journalists, many journalists won't even respond to you, whether they do choose you as a source or not. Similarly, next one, I can help you understand macroeconomic perspective. I don't care. That's not what I asked for, right? If I didn't ask for that, that's not what I want. Now, suddenly I'm getting a wash with so many different submissions, but then this one stuck out to me carparts.com. Now the actual company doesn't matter, but what did they do? Oh look, they provided me with numbers. They provided me with Q1, Q2, Q3. And what do you know, when we go back to the inquiry, that's what I'd asked for. I'd asked for Q1, Q2, and Q3. Now, obviously there's a lot of information in this particular one from Carparts, but I'm now willing to look through it, right? I am willing to pass through, get more information. She's offered me uh, a particular person that I can speak to. I can connect with both the CEO and the CFO if I wanted to. Now, for this particular piece, I was on a tight deadline. I was trying to, to push this report out by the end of quarter, so I didn't need to speak to any particular person. But that was something I actually considered because they answered the question in the first place. This is the key, right? Answer the question in the first place and you will get far more leniency from a reporter. You'll get those follow-up questions. And when you get those follow-up questions, you just increase the likelihood that you are going to be chosen and not anyone else. So this is really important. I cannot stress this enough. You need to make sure that you look through what is the journalist actually asking for and answer that as directly and succinctly as possible. You do that, you're on the right track. And finally, what do you do once you finish pitching? You've pitched it, 
you're going to wait a certain amount of time. Like I said, if you get a response from a journalist, great. You can ask them directly, you know, when do you anticipate this is going to be published? You can do a, a regular follow-up cadence in the same way you would follow up in for a, a sales lead. You can focus on, you know, has it been published yet? Do you have a link? That's great. That's the ideal situation. Unfortunately, most journalists, as I mentioned before, super crunched on time. And so are unlikely, even in the best possible situations, to respond to you. So what do you do? You've got a couple of avenues. One, you can go into your SEO tool set. You've got backlinks. You can filter them. Um, I'm showing you Ahrefs here, but like I said, SEMrush and, and other tools can do the same thing. You can just look at uh, first scene and you can start uh, piecing together a story. Generally, I'm recommending you wait somewhere between two and four weeks because, uh, again, journalists, they can sometimes publish like as soon as the following day, but usually they're trying to get their sources ready for a story that's upcoming, so there'll be a little bit of a delay. Don't be surprised sometimes, even if you were chosen, the journalists had their story scrapped for one reason or another. So like I said, it is a volume game. You do need to pitch this fairly frequently, but hopefully if you adopt some of the strategies and tactics that I've explained to you today, you will be positioned for much better success. And so obviously we can start seeing, you know, many of them are, you know, obviously not going to be uh, always the best domain ranking because needless to say, when you're searching through the SEO tools, they're going to give you um, a lot of the junk uh, links as well as good ones. But you can just start to see uh, certain links that start to come through. And when they do come through, great, there's a sign of your success. Another way, a little bit more rudimentary, but something that can always be helpful, is just typing in your name, your company, or at least the name of the, the company that you're representing or the executive that you're representing. And you can just go to Google and good old fashioned Google News. Uh, you can obviously set up Google Alerts. Um, and needless to say, this is how uh, my team often keeps, keeps an eye on any pieces that I'm getting. So I can see here, you know, some Forbes pieces. Obviously, I know that because I'm a contributor. We see a New York Times piece. So let's dive into this as an example because this was a perfect example of what happens when you do this strategy correctly. So as we can see, this piece was uh, coming out of the pandemic. It was talking about virtual backdrops, something that was related to my field of technology. And we look through, obviously, you know, the people who work at large institutions, you know, a Yale, a University of Virginia, Loom, like these other areas, of course, they're going to often get the limelight. And chances are, if you're watching this, you're probably representing a company that is trying to get some of that SEO love, but doesn't have enough of a brand name to support it. And I'm in the same boat. You know, my company doesn't particularly have a very large uh, footprint. Uh, you know, it's a fairly small company, you know, sub, sub 50 million. And so needless to say, it's all going to be on the power of my pitch. But sure enough, you know, we start to see some of the storytelling elements. And there is that juicy link. And that happens purely because you give the material to the journalists that they need to write up. Now, what did I give? I was able to give a perception and a individualized take on virtual backdrops because that was what this was key for, but I was able to weasel in my company. That is the number one sin you could commit. And if you can avoid it, you will be successful. Don't lead with your company and its expertise. I made this a fairly incidental part of this pitch. You know, that is my company and what it does, but that's it. Everything else was about answering the query that the journalist had, i.e. video backdrops becoming too close and personal. So all of this other material, all of this paragraph, all of this paragraph, 
and all of this final two paragraphs, all of that was about specifically answering the question. And by answering that question, we then get the incidental benefit. Because let's be honest, Harrow is all about just getting those links. We're not trying to do anything else. We're just trying to get those links. If you want in terms of positioning or uh, developing uh, industry accepted thought leadership, that's where you go to long form content. That's where you're publishing blogs, white papers, you know, all this other side of the equation that is still relevant to SEO. There's no doubt about it. We do know that quality content is a huge portion of it. But for this specific goal, for this goal of links, you need to get into the mindset of the journalist. That's all you need to do to make sure that you are successful in this arena. And so if I can recap this entire thing for you today, Harrow is a fairly simple tool and a lot of people use it for that very reason. But because there is a saturation of people using it, you have an enormous opportunity today if you can follow the simple steps that I've outlined to really make a massive impact for both the domains you represent, for the people you represent, whether it's executives, or even yourself if you're trying to kickstart your own entrepreneurial venture. So let's just quickly recap what those steps were. First off, make sure you ignore the anonymous pictures within Harrow. That's number one. Second is make sure you qualify the particular publications you're going to pitch for. Make sure they're either well-known, top-tier publications, or that they have a high domain ranking, especially having a higher domain ranking than your particular domain ranking. After we've done that, you want to make sure that the query matches what you have as expertise. There's no point going after a Forbes, an entrepreneur, a really high-end publication if the query doesn't match. That's not going to be helpful for your domain especially because Google looks at semantic relevance more often than not. Once you've done that, go into the pitch. The pitch needs to be done quickly, hopefully within an hour, but you know, at most, don't let it go longer than a day, 24 hours. Get that pitch in and do everything you can to position yourself as an expert. Make sure you give the link multiple times. Make sure you italicize and give that paragraph in a nice, clear, concise way, and just practice some of the different derivations. You don't have to describe yourself in the same way for every single person. Much better to tailor that to what the journalist's request is. And finally, the number one thing, make sure your answer can be lifted directly from that Harrow pitch email that you send and put straight into the piece, verbatim better than not. Some journalists will modify it and that's okay. That's to be expected. But many journalists, especially those under very significant time crunches, are likely to lift your quote as is. This is an enormous opportunity for you to get those valuable backlinks to your domain, build that authority, as long as you can articulate an answer that fits with what the journalist is trying to say. You do that, you're going to be super successful, you're going to get hundreds of links, you're going to rapidly increase your domain ranking uh, for both your properties, and then obviously you're going to be much better at not only the job of being, whether you're an SEO manager, whether you're a writer, but more importantly, you're going to understand that key fundamental, which is writing for your audience, making sure that you position them for success, so that you can be successful. Thanks very much.